Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at this upcoming very, very cold Arctic air that's going to be making its way into the eastern United States, as well as multiple snowfall opportunities along the way as well. We're going to be taking a look at the overall pattern throughout this video. Anyways, before I get into things, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, how long do you think this cold pattern is going to last? Do you think it's going to last towards the end of January and then flip, or do you think we're going to basically ride out the rest of this winter in this type of pattern? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar imagery. We have a couple of things going on. We have some showers over here in the western United States, as you can see, going on up there, Washington, Oregon, uh, the Rocky Mountain states as well. And then we see some snowfall going on here for the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes, a little bit of that. Some showers going on, especially there in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, areas such as those regions. And then we have these kind of thunderstorms and showers up here for Texas and a little bit of Louisiana as well. Let's just go ahead and zoom in on the western United States. We'll start with the northwestern United States. Uh, and you can see this is just some isolated showers here and sprinkles going on. And we do have some snowfall here for the Northern Cascades, a pretty exclusive region of the Northern Cascades. We have had snowfall overall for the entire uh, region of the Cascades, but that is really diminished towards mostly just this Northern region here, just to the east of Seattle. Now, a lot of these showers that are moving onshore to Washington and Oregon are actually quite heavy. As we're seeing these yellow and oranges pop up, those are actually some pretty quick areas of heavy, heavy uh, rainfall uh, but it's pretty brief. Now, as we take a look a little bit further east here, you can see there is some snowfall going on for northern Idaho and uh, northwestern Montana there. Um, we can see some of this coming down, and it's really uh, sticking around in the areas where it's at and not really moving out of there. Uh, it's sticking around for these mountainous regions. We see this happen pretty often here. Let's move a little bit further south here. We can see near Salt Lake City here in Utah, we're having some pretty heavy precipitation snowfall for the mountains there, and then rainfall here in more of the valley regions. We do see some snowfall up here in Wyoming as well taking place. So there's multiple areas of snowfall even here for Colorado and Wyoming as well, uh, just to the west of Denver and Cheyenne there as well. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of this happen here. Now south of Grand Junction as well, we're seeing some of that snowfall. So there's many regions here uh, in the Rocky Mountains regions that are seeing some precipitation. And even as we head south here into Arizona, you can see some of this rainfall taking place for some spotty regions. The southwest has been seeing quite a bit of rainfall uh, throughout December, and it looks like it's continued somewhat into the month of January, not quite as much out west. Now let's take a look here at the upper Midwest and Great Lakes here, and you can see there is some snowfall that has taken place, like I said, in Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, even northern Minnesota, although that has moved out here up into Canada. Now we can see this is moving out for upper the Upper Peninsula of Michigan as well by this point. So it's kind of like a frontal boundary uh, that just eventually moved through just a line of that snowfall. Uh, and it probably by the time most people are waking up will be fully over Canada by that point. Now let's move down to Texas where we saw these showers and thunderstorms moving up from the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and you can see that that is fully moving in from the Gulf of Mexico for sure. And there's even heavier showers on the way here, as you could see, because uh, those were mostly just some green areas, but now we're starting to see these red and oranges move on shore here uh, to Texas. So if you are in these coastal regions and even inland, you know, Victoria, Galveston, Corpus Christi, areas like that, uh, you can expect to potentially see uh, some thunderstorms in this area throughout the morning hours this morning on January 8th, and that's going to be Saturday, January 8th, obviously. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that modeled guidance. All right, now here we are taking a look at our simulated radar. And as you can see, this is around right now. Let's just move this forward. And you can see that by the time we're reaching this evening at about 8 p.m., we will have a lot of this energy that we saw mostly happening down here is actually going to be heading up way into the kind of central United States, even up into a little bit of the Ohio Valley in here. We see a bit of that energy transferring. Our jet stream looks about like this, but let me tell you, it's going to be a lot colder here than what it looks like here on this. Um, we, we see a lot of snowfall still taking place in here, just some snow showers, things of that nature, some very broad snow showers up here in Canada. Let's just move this forward, and you can see this really, really expands this area in here to something much more 
uh, than it is today. By the time we're reaching tomorrow morning, this is going to be about 11 a.m. here on Sunday, January 9th. Probably a pretty warm day, actually, tomorrow for a lot of these regions uh, as a cold front is about to really shove its way in. So this is going to be very brief, but we do see a lot of this energy happening in between the cold and warmth. That's typically what we see anyway. Uh, jet stream again looks something like this. Just continue this on, and you can see the cold front pushes through. Here's our cold front. Here's the jet stream. It's pushing through. We see a lot of storminess in here, even some snow showers throughout these uh, more inland and colder regions by this point. And it finally pushes all the way through. By the time we're taking a look at Monday afternoon, January 10th, the jet stream will look about like that. Uh, obviously, like I said before in yesterday's video, no storms because if there was a storm like this, we would see a major, major snowstorm with this amount of cold air in place. That's just not working out like that. For sure, definitely not. Uh, and then we get kind of quiet. Okay, cold in the east, warm in the west, but quiet. Very, very quiet. All the way through Wednesday, January 12th time frame. No storms to speak of. The only storm we have is really down here in the southwest. Cold, cold, cold. Really boring. And then eventually we finally get a storm here by Saturday, January 15th. That's how long we'll have to wait. We do have some snowfall here on the northern end. Rainfall here on the southern end. Uh, and really, it moves in right as the cold air moves out for the eastern United States. The jet stream looks like this. We're seeing more cold air trying to build its way back in. We do get a bit of snowfall here on the European model here in the inland regions. But the problem here is that it's so far out. This is almost 200 hours out. This is Sunday at about 2 a.m. on January 16th. So this is so far out I can't have any confidence in it. But we do get a bit of a coastal storm that tries to build in here. Uh, and bring some spotty snowfall in here. So we will watch this time frame for a potential snowstorm, but really it's so far out. Uh, the one thing to mention that I, that I think is definitely worth mentioning here on this model run is that it's so cold in the east, overwhelmingly cold here from this point all the way through 10 days from now. There's only a couple of very brief warm-ups between now and then, uh, and that is definitely the biggest thing to take away from this. We do have some storminess in spots at times. As you can see, there's three different spots with some minor storminess by this point. But really, nothing to write home about. Uh, and let's see if the GFS agrees for the most part. It, it looks quite on this too, really. I mean, we do get that 16th snowstorm as well. This one moves in more like a Miller B nor'easter, uh, bringing snowfall to these regions. But really, it's the same idea. Uh, and as we move this beyond... We get much colder on the GFS in the long range. We saw this yesterday, but even bigger trough moving in uh, beyond 300 hours out, which is kind of fantasy land by this point. But we do see some snowfall in multiple spots as well. Uh, this would be like the Arctic blast of a century if this was to occur. We do have some snowfall happening along the East Coast here by this point. So yeah, it, I mean, relatively quiet on this as well. It just stays cold all the way through uh, the 24th of January. So this model goes much further out. It stays very, very cold. Here, there's what the jet stream would be about, but no huge storms to speak of. It's like when we were in the warmer pattern, we were seeing storm after storm after storm, and then the cold is finally in place where we could see some snowfall, and it just really falls through. We don't see any of those opportunities for snowfall, just deep cold with no precipitation. Uh, so, like I said, the main takeaway is that it's likely we're going to see very cold conditions for the next two weeks or even more. Uh, and storminess could develop later on. These models could be wrong about it being so inactive. But right now, it seems like we're leaning more towards an inactive period of time during this cold air. Uh, so nothing to write home about. Uh, but I do see the potential for very major snowstorms if, if in fact, we did see anything move along this jet stream. Uh, and there is a couple of major low pressure systems we do see move across Canada throughout these model runs. But Really nothing, like I said, down, down in the lower 48 to write home about, uh, for sure. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. For today's confidence tab, we're at a 4 out of 6 today. Uh, we talked about some very short range and some very long range things and everything in between. So we're at about a 50% confidence for today's video. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think the East Coast could see their next big snowstorm? And James Moore said, I believe the next big East Coast snowstorm uh, won't be for another week and a half. Uh, and I'm sure it could even be beyond that in your mind. But uh, I think good comment of the day there. It looks to be quiet at least for the next week and a half to two weeks. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Eagle, Lily Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. 
I'd also like to thank our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kodalasa, Capite, Charles Tennant, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Capite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.